Benjamin is now the favored son. You other brothers go because there could be some harm on the way, but don't let me lose my beloved son. So I'm going to begin in chapter 42 after Joseph has read all of Pharaoh's dreams, after he's, he's become a, a high-ranking official. And now the brothers are about to come to him. This kind of bookend narrative for the Joseph story. Chapter 42, And Jacob saw that there were provisions in Egypt. And Jacob said to his sons, Why are you fearful? And he said, Look, I have heard that there are provisions in Egypt. Go down there, get us provisions from there, that we may live and not die. And the ten brothers of Joseph went to buy grain from Egypt. But Benjamin, Joseph's brothers, Jacob did not send with his brothers, for he thought, lest harm befall him. Benjamin is now the favored son. He is the new Joseph to his brothers. You other brothers go because there could be some harm on the way, but don't let me lose my beloved son, the son of Rachel. And the sons of Israel came to buy provisions among those who came, for there was famine in the land of Canaan. As for Joseph, he was regent of the land. He was provider to all the people. And Joseph's brothers came and bowed down to him and their faces to the ground. And Joseph saw his brothers and recognized them. And he played the stranger to them and spoke harshly to them. And he says, where have you come from? And just notice here what's going on. Notice they bow down to the ground. And if you remember your details in the text, you know this is specifically from Joseph's dreams when all the sheaves bow down to Joseph. Now you're going to see this same image of the bowing down repeated again and again and again. And Joseph recognized his brothers, but they did not recognize him. And Joseph remembered the dreams he had dreamed about them. And he said to them, you are spies to see the land's nakedness you have come. And they said to him, no, my Lord, for your servants have come to buy food. We are all the sons of one man. We are honest. Your servants would never be spies. And he said to them, no, for the land's nakedness you have come to see. And it's this weird accusation he makes against them. You are spies. But I want you to think about what, how, what does this have to do to the previous episode that we've seen? The, this second part of the Joseph story is a playing out of the first part. He needs them to see their misdeeds. He needs them to replay that drama one more time to get them to stop and to turn back from their ways, to see their errors. So why is he accusing them of spies? I think it's simple enough. Is that not what they accuse Joseph of being when his father would send them out to bring ill report? What is he accusing them of now? He's accusing them of being spies. It's a replay of that first story. Twelve brothers your servants are, and we are the sons of one man in the land of Canaan. And look, the youngest is now with our father, and one is no more. And Joseph said to them, That's just what I told you, you are spies. You shall not leave this place unless your youngest brother comes here. Send one of you to bring your brother, and as for the rest of you, you will be detained, and your words will be tested as to whether the truth is with you. And if not by Pharaoh, you must be spies. And he put them under guard for three days. And Joseph said to them on the third day, Do this and live, for I fear God. If you are honest, let one of your brothers be detained in this very guardhouse, and the rest of you go forth and bring back provisions to stave off the famine in your homes. And your youngest brother you shall bring to me that your words may be confirmed, and you need not die. And they said each to his brother, Alas, we are guilty for our brother whose mortal distress we saw when he pleaded with us, and we did not listen. That is why this distress has overtaken us. You can see what's going on here. The plan is working. The brothers are recognizing already the way in which that which they had done to Joseph is coming to bear here. Then Reuben spoke out to them in these words, Didn't I say to you, do not sin against the boy? And you would not listen. And now look, his blood is requited. Look, at it's the same pattern here. Remember the first story, they all speak together with one voice. Then the first voice that singles himself out is Reuben. It's the same pattern repeated here. They all speak with one voice. Then Reuben speaks out one more time. And he even brings, uh, brings out, look, his blood is requited. And of course, Joseph recognizes all of, the, all of this, and he weeps. And Joseph gives orders that they fill their bag with grain and fill it with silver. And of course, when the brothers discover this, they're horrified. Now they'll be accused of being spies, be accused of being thieves. What Joseph is kind of reminding them of here is what he uh, was sold to in Egypt for, for that money. 
He's putting the money right back into their bags as this constant reminder. And of course, they report to their father everything that has transpired in Egypt, how now Simeon is the one who's left there. And in order to get Simeon back, there again has to be this exchange. There has to be a sacrifice. We must bring back Benjamin in order to bring back Simeon. And Israel's response is startling. Jacob, their father, said to them, Me you have bereaved, Joseph is no more, and Simeon is no more, and Benjamin you would take, it is I who bear all. And Reuben spoke to his father, saying, My two sons you may put to death if I do not bring him back to you. Place him in my hands, and I will return him to you. And here again, what do you see? Reuben working so hard to get back into his father's graces. To, to really offer up something absurd. Yes, of course, this will make Israel feel better. If you don't bring him back, he's going to kill his two grandsons. Reuben's so desperate to get back in his father's good graces, what he's willing to say is, I'll sacrifice my two sons on behalf of Benjamin. And of course, this isn't going to get anywhere with Israel. And he said, my son shall not go down with you for his brother is dead. And look at this line, and he alone remains. And think about all of the brothers hearing this. Benjamin alone remains. I will not send him with you, which essentially means I'll keep him and Simeon's just going to have to stay there in Egypt. Imagine what this is, what these brothers are witnessing here, all on behalf of Benjamin. And should harm befall him on the way you were going, you would bring down my gray head in sorrow to Sheol. It's the same repetition. He won't be consoled. You will bring my head down to shale in this, in this sorrow. It's a complete replay of the Joseph story. And of course, what we need to anticipate now, because of course we know they will be going back to Egypt and they will be bringing Benjamin with them. Thank you for watching. We hope you're enjoying our highlight series and invite you to explore all of Hillsdale College's online courses. They are free and for everyone who loves to learn.